This episode is brought to you by Bluehost.com. Hey, welcome back everybody, Jeremy here. On today's episode, I'll be showing you how to stream your GoPro Hero 4 over Wi-Fi. Yes, it is now possible. After that, we'll be checking out the feature video created by Sebastian Lindblad, and I even got the chance to do a quick little Google Hangouts with him to discuss his edit. So let's jump right into this video. So about two years ago, I put out a video for the GoPro Hero 3 showing you how to stream over Wi-Fi. It worked pretty good with the Hero 3 Plus as well. Now, I tried doing those same steps for the Hero 4, and it just was not working. I finally was doing some searching, and I figured out the way to do it. The method was posted on Reddit, and it definitely helped me out a lot. Now, this works with the newest version of firmware on the Hero 4. I'm really not too sure if it works with the older version. Now, I'm going to lay it out step by step. You'll need a few things, and just make sure to check out the description because I'll have all the links to all the software and scripts that you're going to need to get this working. The first thing you're going to need to do is download a program called FFmpeg. I have the link in the description. You'll need to choose between the 32-bit or the 64-bit versions. It really just depends on your system. Unzip the folder contents, and we'll come back to this a little later. Next, you'll need to download and install Python. Again, there's a link in the description. Choose either the 32-bit or the 64-bit, install the program, and you'll see exactly why we need this a little bit later. Okay, now let's get to the good stuff. Turn on your GoPro and enable Wi-Fi to use the GoPro app. Connect your laptop to the GoPro Wi-Fi network, and then next go to the folder containing the FFmpeg extracted files. Look for the batch file named FFprompt. Double click it and the command line will open up. Now in the command line, type in FFplay space UDP colon slash slash colon 8554. Check the description if you just want to copy and paste it. Press enter and then open up a web browser and type this URL. The exact URL is in the description. Press enter and the live stream will begin in a few seconds. There's only one catch though. The stream will eventually stop. You'll have to restart the stream manually each time the stream stops. Now, there is a way to overcome this issue, and that's where the power of scripting comes in. To make it easier for you, I created a Python script which will keep the live stream continuous without any breaks. The stream will not stop until you stop it yourself. The link to the Python script is in the description. Okay, so now I want to show you how to set this up to get a continuous live stream. Open up the FF prompt again, type in the FF play command, reload the URL in the browser, and as soon as the stream begins, click the Python script. Voila, there it is, a continuous live stream from the Hero 4. The quality of the stream is not that great. The resolution is only 432 by 240. The stream will also include audio. Enable the audio again. Lower it. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. That's it. And so there you go. That's how you stream your GoPro Hero 4 over Wi-Fi. It's really simple. A few steps you need to follow. But if you're still having problems, you can leave your questions down below. And like you can use this for, I don't know, like monitoring purposes. In case you don't want to use your small smartphone, you could use a laptop with a bigger screen and you could monitor or frame your shots a little better. All right, so now let's get into the featured video shot by Sebastian Lindblad. I stumbled on this video and I have to say it is really cool. The music choice, the panning shots, the way it's edited, it's just really well put together. I was able to reach out to Sebastian and do a quick little Google Hangout to ask him a few questions about his edit. Today we have uh, Sebastian Lindblad and we're gonna do a quick little Q&A. So basically the first thing I wanted to cover was like, so how did you get your smooth shots? Like, how are you able to get that amazing smoothness, basically? <laughs> to that, I used a handy little device called the Swift Cam. I think it's the same device as the Feiyu G3. I'm not sure because it's very, very, very similar, as you can see. If, if you've seen it, it's, it also says uh, G3 on the side there. And with this device, you have um, a three axis of stabilization. And if I turn it on, let's see, I, it's a button in the bottom. There, there you go. If you press this button two, two times, you have a follow also, does a smooth uh, motion up and down and to the sides. Nice. But if you just wanted to have a, a straight horizon and follow without having to worry about the um, 
uh, the tilt. You just uh, uh, press it once and you will lock the tilt. And then you also have, if you hold the button, you will also uh, freeze it in the direction. So like about how long does the batteries last? Like I'm guessing if you go on vacation for like a week or two, you should definitely have extra batteries with you if you're you know, going out exploring and all that good stuff. Yeah, so I was looking for the charger, but I didn't find it. So I think I lasted for a week, you know, w w using it sparingly. Maybe yeah. uh, when I saw a nice opportunity, uh, then I took it. And when the battery was out, it, it like, you know, limps like this. <laughs> and so I, 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 I turned it off and I turned it on and I got maybe two or three seconds and then I made a shot <laughs> went limp again. So the elephant shot was like that. You know, the elephant, I was trying to put it on and turn it on, turn it off and then, so it was a little... <laughs> so I noticed like in the beginning you used the gimbal, but towards the middle to end you used something a little different. Can you just explain those shots? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, in the end, there was one, uh, I was trying to do some kind of smack my bitch up uh, video where I had, you know, this point of view from uh, my perspective. So I just took the head strap on and went to the beach and just took uh, and uh, edited to the beats and just uh, tried to have it as chaotic as possible in the ending. So, so you just max up the tempo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what video editing software did you use to edit this video? I used uh, Sony Vegas Pro. Uh, and I uh, uh, converted it to proxies because the GoPro format on PC is uh, uh, I'm not uh, it's not very, maybe it's very in Premiere but in Vegas it's very choppy uh, and you don't get smooth uh, forward and backwards so I did the proxies on them and then I uh, just uh, I, I just put everything on a tire uh, like a three hour <laughs> and then I um, took parts of it and I scrubbed through and found snippets of parts that were really nice and I trimmed it to likes and then I trimmed it to must-haves and then I trimmed it to the best of the best uh, of the footage. I was wondering if you had like any tips or tips or tricks for people that are you know kind of just starting out making cool GoPro edits um, like did you did you have an idea of what song you're gonna use beforehand you mentioned it was your friend song so that's a big yeah. plus. Yeah, that uh, the, the when I do these kinds of movies, I'm, I'm I get very inspired by the music. So uh, I was I had the raw material lying around. I didn't know really what kind of mood I wanted to edit to. That song is really nice, and it has very interesting beats and very interesting um, um, uh, rhythm to it. Uh, so uh, I thought, oh, that, that's gonna be great. So I I took it and I put it on timeline, and then it just. It started to flow, you know, when you feel the beats and you, and you feel the, uh, the energy going into it, then you get into this create, creative um, bubble. <laughs> Try to find a song uh, that connects to the material in some way. Maybe it's uh, not that easy in the beginning, but once you get a cut that sits with the, with the beat, uh, it's a really satisfying theme. Get a nice song and have fun and... Uh, your heart with love. <laughs> and that's definitely what happened with your video. Like the edit was amazing. And like I stumbled on your video. I guess you posted it to Reddit, the GoPro subreddit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got a lot of good feedback on there. A lot of people loved it. Um, yeah, in a way, yeah. And like, so when I first saw it, the first thing that like draw like drew my attention to it was the opening few shots. I think it was like five clips or something like that. The black yeah. and whites. So yeah. I really loved how it kind of like sucked you into the video and the music kind of like draws you in. So it's like a perfect little combination and it kind of, it really flowed really well. So that's what made me want to stay to watch the whole thing. But I felt like I wanted to start with something fast and interesting, uh, but, you know, to compress the flight that is very long and very boring and very uh, lifeless. So, uh, but I, I really wanted to start with, you know, and then release in color and you know and and the song has an uh, bam, and it's about four yeah, seconds so I'm gonna I'm gonna edit the crap out of those four seconds <laughs> and speed it up and, and just you know and make it black and white and and then when the beat comes it's like slow motion and color but poof yeah bah, bah, bah. <laughs> and then you, uh, try to keep the tempo that's uh, that's um, if I felt that something 
if I show this to my wife or some other friend while I'm editing and I feel like I'm like this when I see it, uh, then I think, oh, that part must um, must shorten down and must um, you must move on. So when you feel that it's a little bit too long, but the shots are all right, if you know that you have more to put into the timeline, just uh, trust your gut and uh, proceed with the story uh, without uh, so that you don't lose the energy. And it's so easy to lose the energy, especially in the, in the, this kind of editing that's very quick all the time. So I, I split the editing session up in maybe two or three evenings uh, so that I had a fresh start and you know watched it from the beginning, watched it from the beginning and just seeing if, I, if something could be sped up. That made me shove up, a, uh, throw away a lot of material that I maybe wanted to show but it didn't fit the overall tone of the movie. So okay. Kill Your Darlings, it's an old expression, I think it uh, qualifies everywhere. Oh, I have one little tip uh, also with this one. Don't walk normally. Walk on air. Walk with your toes and with your foot, foot and your toes move smoothly with the ground. Because if you rely too much on it, then it will be a little bit shaky. So move like you are on air. I just want to say again, thanks a lot for doing this quick Q&A with me today. Thank it's you. Been a lot of help. I think a lot of people will definitely appreciate it. And I hope you yeah. guys go check out his video and subscribe to his channel if you want to check out all his stuff. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, see you, man. Bye. Yeah, bye. Now, I haven't yet played around with a portable 3-axis gimbal. The only one I really used was the larger HiFly 3-axis gimbal, which is made more for DSLR and larger cameras. Uh, maybe in the near future, I will purchase a portable 3-axis gimbal and do a review on it. If you're interested in purchasing a portable 3-axis gimbal, I'll have a link down in the description. If you want to follow me on other social media, you can keep up to date with me on other things that I'm working on, and you can check out those links in the description as well. I'd like to also quickly mention again that this video is brought to you by Bluehost.com, so if you're in need of a new website, you can check out my link in the description, and you can get a website going for as little as $3.95 a month. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate all the likes and comments, and I will see you next week.